thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy LA Productions. Okay, yes, technology is ever-changing, but this was, is a little hard to believe for me. Mind control is real. Actual technology to help people with mobility challenges. Researchers are finding ways to drive with just your mind. He drove a race car around Pikes Peak International Raceway this afternoon with his mind. My name is German Aldana Suniga. I was born in Honduras, but I came here to Miami. I live in Miami since I was about 12 years old. I'm a student at Miami Dade College. I'm at about my second year. I'm doing a bachelor's and I'm studying computer programming. So I'm here at Pikes Peak International Raceway. Uh, i never been out of Miami on a plane for the first time uh, to drive a cool NASCAR car. So it's going to be a fun, exciting new experience for me. My name's Scott Fauci. I'm a neurosurgeon and I specialize in surgeries to the chronically injured spinal cord. So I've been dealing with spinal cord injured patients for the last 30 years. One thing I note with them is that uh, mobility and independence is everything for them. So we designed it so that they could participate in motorsports. And we've been doing that really for the last nine years at various uh, racing venues. This most recent project, uh, this brain machine interface project, this is the first time we've brought our driver, German, who's uh, sustained paralysis. He uh, has a quadriplegia and he has a little uh, electrode brain implant that our engineers are able to capture the electronic imprint uh, from the brain for a particular thought and translate that into the use of the throttle in the car. Uh, so we're going to be seeing that shortly here. Let's see if it works. So I'm Ryan Dussex. I've been racing cars for about 18 years. I work here at Pikes Peak International Raceway doing uh, motorsport stuff. I'm the pro driver. This weekend I'm the safety driver for the Fauci adaptive car. 
I've raced on both the east and west coast, everywhere in between. It's very possible that uh, if you're seeing me for the first time, it won't be the last. It's so cool hanging out with German and just seeing kind of his disposition, how fast he's picked this up. I think we, we forget how much we take advantage of the stuff that we have available to us and it's super cool to see somebody so driven. It's, it's definitely a unique situation for a guy who's a race car driver, a guy who wants to win, who guys used to be in first, to be, literally be the co-pilot and take a back seat to somebody who is literally breaking history right now and, and doing something that's never been done for the first time. You guys get to see it in the cameras, you guys get to see it, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting to be literally right next to German while he's doing it, and it's just, I think that's the coolest, coolest part. There's, there's not a better seat in the house to spectate this. I'm uh, Dr. Harry Doreen. I'm an engineer in uh, electronics and uh, software engineering. I do consulting work. I've been doing some research work with the Air Force Academy. They sort of picked up on our work in our brain computer interface space uh, and with their tech and his tech that they have and our tech with the brain computer interface, they reached out and said, hey, let's, let's put these two things together. We got on a call and said, you know, we said, yeah, we think we can do this. There are several aspects of this control because we basically control the steering in the car by just simply turning your head. There's a sip and puff tube which we use for controlling the gas and brake. And then the latest technology we're just bringing in with the brain computer interface is we're now using technology to monitor, you know, kind of a thought in the brain that says throttle on and we can uh, control the uh, car throttle from that. So we use those in combination and based on that, we can get very smooth control of the car. One of the cool things about this is that this technology doesn't ever uh, get outside of the laboratory setting. Part of my role in my studies was seeing if we could get this into German's home. Uh, and so now this is kind of a step forward of getting it out even, you know, remote area, lots of noise in the car. And that was one of my concerns was, is the, you know, the noise of the engine in the vehicle going to affect the signal that we're going to allow him to use his brain to drive it? And we found that, yeah, no, he can still use that in there. So I was a little apprehensive and then kind of watching it, you know, see that trigger go even while the car was on was really cool. You get a person that's been dealt kind of a, a rough blow in life, you know, they still have an amazing zest for life. And just that opportunity to feel like you're in control of more than just your wheelchair, but to get in an 850 horsepower race car and be able to go out and drive it, it's a, certainly a thrill for me to see them be able to use this technology to, uh, to drive the car and feel like they, they have control of their lives again. I'm happy to welcome you all to the exciting unveiling of Fauci Adaptive Motorsports Brain Controlled Driving. <laughs> Following the session today, we will head over to the track and watch as German makes his way around as the first person to control the throttle of an 850 horsepower NASCAR adaptive race car. It means a lot. It's like the biggest blessing. Because this wasn't nowhere near like any thought or goal because I didn't expect nothing, none of this. This was nowhere near what I would have ever thought to be in the list of things that I would have done. Oh, today was just a thrilling, exciting day, just seeing um, German, who just came out here on Monday, having never driven a car before, and just get in this 850 horsepower NASCAR Cup car 
there was definitely nervousness on his part and all our parts because we had uh, really never come together as two teams, Miami and uh, the Colorado team, to see if this technology would even work. But uh, watching German uh, very cautiously do this the first day and each day get more confident and uh, control the car uh, more confidently with greater speeds. And today, um, just seeing uh, the joy he experienced and, and the delight and the confidence grow, it was just a wonderful day. For me personally, a whole lifetime of working on cars and carry that into racing and then ultimately winning a championship. Looking back at it, the championship, while it was great, it can feel pretty hollow when you realize what we do with the automobiles and the capacity that we're doing here with Fauci Adaptive. And that is to take an actual race car that we've built and raced and won championships with and use it to display new technologies that help the mobility challenge community gain back just a little slice of the freedom that they've lost. So it's, it's been a success for sure. And there was no equipment breaks, no software malfunctions, and history was made. It just felt fantastic to be able to drive a car like that with confidence, not being afraid, and just giving it my best. I felt like I haven't felt in a long time, man. It, the future is bright. There's no, no telling what can be done. We just gotta try it out and see how far we could take it. Hey everybody, just wanted to say thank you very much for watching this video. As a longtime Furniture Row fan, this was a really special opportunity for me, but beyond that, it was such an incredible experience getting to meet all of these accomplished and ambitious people, watch them come together and create such a magnificent piece of technology. It was emotional, it was inspiring, and history was made. And I'm so thankful that I got to be a part of it. So thank you so much to all the people at Pikes Peak for having me, it was an absolute blast, and I can't wait for what's next. And lastly, I just wanted to say thank you guys. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna cry, you can't make me. And lastly, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for 10 amazing years on YouTube, a whole damn decade, can you believe it? I started this channel when I was in elementary school and now I'm halfway through college. I mean, it's unbelievable. And through the highs and lows of growing up, I've always had this channel. And while I'm very proud of all the work I've done up to this point, it wouldn't mean so much if I didn't have such amazing viewers like you. So once again, Thank you so much for being part of the journey. All my links and annotations will be right here. And as always, this is Ellie Productions 49 signing off.